Journeys into space are long and arduous, much like traveling across America used to be in the mid-1800s. Back then, this problem was solved by building infrastructure, like the Transcontinental Railroad. Today, we might solve a similar problem by building a tethered ring, a true superhighway to the stars. A tethered ring is a megastructure proposed by the Atlantis Project that would attach stations on the ground directly to stations in the upper atmosphere. The ring would have a smaller radius than Earth and would provide transportation from Earth to space, space to Earth, and even from point to point on Earth. Having this infrastructure in place would greatly reduce transportation costs and increase humanity's capacity for developing space. The ring is a promising idea, as technological developments have been getting closer and closer to making it a reality. But how would a tethered ring work? The basics are a balance of three forces. Part 1. Understanding the Physics A structure as large as a tethered ring could not stay aloft in the stratosphere without inertial support. Like all matter in the universe, the ring would experience the constant force of gravity proportional to its mass. The task of the ring would be to balance this downward force with the two others available to it, inertial force and tensile force. Traditional rigid structures rely on compressive forces to balance the force of gravity. This puts a limit on the size of rigid structures due to the limitations of available materials. These limitations can be expressed as compressive strength. This is an intrinsic material property that describes how hard a material can be compressed without breaking. As a structure gets taller, the force of gravity acting on it gets larger, so the compressive force must grow to balance it out, especially near the bottom of the structure. This requires a wider and wider base to compensate, but eventually the force grows past the compressive strength of any known material, so the structure becomes infeasible. An inertially supported structure would get around this limitation by introducing forces due to inertia. Inertial forces come from momentum conservation and Newton's laws of motion. Particularly, the tethered ring would generate inertial force by magnetically containing a rapidly circulating stream of mass. While the exterior layer of the ring would be stationary relative to the ground, it would have an interior layer that travels faster than orbital velocity. A body remains at rest, or in motion at a constant speed in a straight line, unless acted upon by a force, so the mass stream would naturally tend to continue in a straight line rather than curve in a circular path. To keep the stream from tearing itself apart, the exterior layer would provide an inward force on the stream. This force would come from magnetism. Due to Newton's third law that if two bodies exert forces on each other, these forces have the same magnitude but opposite directions, this inward force would be paired with an outward force exerted on the exterior ring. This outward force would provide a counterbalance to gravity. However, it wouldn't completely cancel gravity. Since the tethered ring would have a smaller radius than Earth, the center of the ring would not coincide with the center of Earth. Thus, the outward inertial force would act at an odd angle relative to gravity. Something's missing. The final piece of the puzzle is the tensile force that would be supplied by tethers strung between the ring and the ground like the main cables of a suspension bridge. Because the structure incorporates inertial support, the tension necessary is feasible within the limits of the tensile strengths of current materials, such as carbon fiber. Together, these three forces sum to zero. Our equation of motion is balanced, so the tethered ring can stand. Through this combination of forces, the tethered ring would accomplish the peculiar feat of hanging in the air suspended by cables to the ground. Is this even possible to build? Yes. In fact, it could be done much more easily than other megastructure ideas. Part 2. Megastructure done easy. Building an inertially supported structure can be a daunting task, often because the support can't be provided until the structure is complete but the support is needed while the structure is in progress. This creates a chicken and egg problem for many other megastructure proposals, such as the orbital rings and space fountains I made a video about a few years ago. The construction of a tethered ring would get around this limitation by going in stages. First, the ring would be produced in factories on the ground, for instance, around the rim of the Pacific Ocean. These factories would produce the ring segment by segment and slowly build it out until it completely encircled the ocean. 
Then, the ring would be attached to its tethers and cable-laying ships, themselves hooked up to the ocean floor for the lifting process. Once the ends of the ring were linked up and its interior pumped down to vacuum, the mass stream could be levitated and spun up. With the application of tension from the cable-laying ships, a balance of forces would be achieved and the ring would begin to rise. The process of lifting the ring would involve a slow ramping up of the speed of the mass stream, while the cable-laying ships traveled inward, away from the ring, supported by mooring lines continually repositioned underwater. The ships would constantly play out the tether as the ring rises. This would gradually lift the ring to its final position in the upper atmosphere. Once it got there, the tethers would be attached to permanent anchor platforms, and the ring would be ready for operation. This mode of construction has many advantages. Building the ring on Earth rather than in space means that it wouldn't need well-developed space infrastructure as a prerequisite. It could be the beginning of space infrastructure. Also, the ring could be positioned in the upper atmosphere rather than low Earth orbit, giving it some protection from meteorite strikes and cosmic radiation. Looking back at the orbital ring concept, we see that it wouldn't have this freedom. It would have to be built in space, which would require a massive amount of pre-existing orbital infrastructure, and it couldn't be built in the upper atmosphere, so it would be exposed to the harsh environment of low Earth orbit. The tethered ring is clearly the more practical option. Once built and hung aloft, the tethered ring would be ready to provide a whole host of transportation services. Part 3. The Superhighway The most obvious purpose of a tethered ring would be Earth-to-space transportation. However, it would also provide a high-altitude corridor for traffic from point to point on Earth. Its location in the upper atmosphere would provide the best of both worlds, an environment free from much air resistance but also free from a lot of the dangers of space. Earth-to-space transportation would be accomplished by a mass driver system. A mass driver would use magnetic forces to accelerate objects to tremendous velocities. This is the same principle behind high-speed maglev rail. Magnetic levitation allows a car to travel over a track without actually touching it, which significantly reduces the friction experienced by the car. However, maglev trains on Earth still experience a great deal of air resistance, limiting their speed. A mass driver would have to accelerate its loads down an evacuated tube, so that air resistance wouldn't burn the objects up. In doing so, a mass driver would launch payloads into space with significantly less rocket fuel. The system would be almost entirely electric, and much more efficient in terms of energy spent to get a payload to space. However, mass drivers would still have a problem with air resistance. When they release an object, it would slam into the atmosphere and experience a lot of air resistance before reaching orbit. A tethered ring would solve this problem and serve as an ideal platform for a mass driver. A mass driver could be suspended from a tethered ring, either entirely at the ring's high altitude or starting on the ground and climbing to that altitude. A payload released from a mass driver at this altitude would experience much less air resistance, so heating effects wouldn't be as severe. The payload would still need some fuel to slightly correct its trajectory and enter orbit, but it would be much less than what a full rocket system needs. The length of a mass driver would be determined by its maximum acceleration and the desired final velocity for its payloads. For unmanned missions to low Earth orbit, the length of tube would be minimized by allowing for high acceleration and lower velocity. However, to maximize the utility of a mass driver, for instance to allow it to send manned missions to other planets, it would have to be longer. To achieve a final velocity of 15 km per second with a maximum acceleration of 3 g's, the driver would have to be 3,750 km long, about the distance from New York to Los Angeles. While this might sound like a difficult thing to build, recall that the ring itself is much longer, so the mass driver would comfortably fit among the architecture. Point-to-point -point transportation would be accomplished by suspending a ring for transit vehicles from the inertially supported ring. This transit ring would be filled with a light gas like hydrogen or helium at an equal pressure to the outside air, about 0.05 bar at 32 kilometers of altitude. This would greatly limit the air resistance experienced by the transit cars, and increase the speed of sound inside the tube so that the vehicles could remain subsonic while traveling at 4,000 km per hour. At this speed, a trip from New York to Los Angeles would take about an hour. 
Of course, trips would take a little longer than this because getting up to and down from the ring would also take about 15 minutes each way. However, the end result is a transportation system much faster than passenger planes and much cheaper too. Conclusion Much like the railroads of old, a tethered ring would be revolutionary for transportation. It would provide efficient service around the world and to other planets. This video has mainly focused on one example of a tethered ring, a ring around the Pacific Ocean proposed by the Atlantis Project. However, tethered rings could come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and locations to more precisely serve the transportation demands of the world. But it doesn't stop there. The benefits of tethered rings would be tremendous. They could host scientific stations in the upper atmosphere to conduct experiments. For instance, is it possible to genetically engineer bacteria and plants that could survive in the upper atmosphere? Answering that question could help in the terraformation of Mars. The possibilities are just about endless. One day, we may have the tethered ring to thank for making life multi-planetary. If you'd like to learn more about the tethered ring concept, I'd highly recommend visiting the Atlantis Project's website and the YouTube channel Space Infrastructure. There, you'll find papers, video links, and 3D simulations to teach you more about what's possible with a tethered ring. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, it would be amazing if you liked and subscribed to Graviton Media. We have lots of videos and live streams about space exploration, hobby rocketry, science history, and much more. You may also enjoy my sci-fi books, which touch on similar topics and are available on Amazon.